All right, welcome to the latest Real Health webinar. As you can see on your screen, this is step number four of the 10 steps to renew your energy. Step number four is to reset your sleep. So as always, I'm your host, Dr. Taylor Crick with the Real Health Resource, and I'm really excited about this topic. I, you know, This is part of our 10 steps to renew your energy, and it's probably the most obvious step because if you sleep poorly, I think that everybody has experienced this before, that if you sleep poorly, you're going to be lacking in energy. And if you sleep poorly consistently, you're going to be lacking severely. You're going to be fatigued. You're going to be tired. It is the automatic side effect of poor sleep. So the answer, the solution, is to reset your sleep and reset your sleep cycles. If you're just tuning into this webinar and you haven't, you're not familiar with the 10 steps, this is step number four. So step number one was to eat a real food diet, okay? And these are, you know, the first four steps and really the first five steps are, are kind of broad for everybody. They could be the first five steps to reversing heart disease or reversing diabetes or healing autoimmune conditions, you know, et cetera, et cetera. They're just basic, basic steps. Step number one was to eat a real food diet. So make sure that you're eating real food. The important part of that is, is more what you're not eating. You're not eating fake food. You're not eating processed food. But if you want to boost your energy, if you want to regain your energy, you have to be eating a real food diet. Step number two is to be exercising regularly. It doesn't have to be for a long period of time like we went through in that webinar. It doesn't have to be anything extreme, but just exercising regularly, so critically important. Step number three was reducing your stress, and in particular, reducing your stress hormones. Some action steps that you can do to decrease the stress response, to turn off your fight or flight physiology, the stress physiology that's at the root of so many of our disease processes today, but to turn it into rest and digest, to turn some of those switches and turn that stress response off. Now today is step number four, it is resetting your sleep. And this is you know, just such an important topic for, for really anybody if you have poor sleep. And there's an estimated 20 million people, 20 million people in our country that have diagnosed long-term chronic sleep issues. And another 40 million that say they've experienced some sleep imbalances recently. It's estimated to cost about $16 billion a year in uh, missed work days and in decreased productivity just from sleep problems alone. So if you are out there and you want to renew your energy, you want to regain your life, or you just want to get back onto a, a good track, a good sleep cycle, that's what we're going to talk about today. Now the important thing with this is, is to understand that it is a cycle. Just like the last webinar we talked about the stress response. Well, these hormones that we're going to start digging more into over the course of the next couple of webinars, they happen in, in cycles. They're what's called cyclical. For example, your main stress hormone that we talked about a lot uh, in the last webinar is called cortisol. Cortisol is released from your adrenal glands, and it spikes in the morning, and throughout the day, it comes down, 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 down. So there are different things that you can do to keep cortisol from spiking in the middle of the day or from spiking in the evening. You want those good cycles. An example of somebody whose cycles might be off might be somebody who they have low cortisol in the morning, they're normal in the afternoon, and they have high cortisol in the, in the evening. That might be somebody who's like wired and tired, who they wake up in the morning and they don't feel like they're refreshed. They feel like they didn't get a good night's sleep. They're tired in the morning but they're wired at night and they can't fall asleep. Even though they know they're tired, they know that their cycles are disrupted, their cycles are flip-flop. That's also one of the concerns with you know, night workers or shift workers especially, who go back and forth between days and nights. They throw off their cycles. We've probably all heard of what's called our circadian rhythm, and that's the exact same thing. Your hormones work in cycles, but they work together with, with, with what's called your circadian rhythm, which are your sleep cycles. When the sun comes up in the morning, it wakes us up. When the sun sets in the evening, 
it calms us down. That's largely what we're going to be talking about today is how to reset your circadian rhythm and reset your sleep cycles. Because the answer is not Ambien. The answer is not Xanax. The answer is natural things that you can do to reset cycles and take control of this so that you can start getting better at sleep, so that you can improve your energy, so that you can go on to lead a longer, healthier life. That's the number one thing that we're after. So let's pull up the slides here. 10 steps to renew your energy. Well, first off, you know, why, why do we want to, you know, get these cycles back on track? What happens when they are in balance to your overall health? So a bad lifestyle, okay? That's everything that we've talked about so far. Uh, poor diet, inactivity, a stressful life cycle, uh, or, or stressful life, uh, bad lifestyle leads to hormone disruption. Okay, that's what we've covered in the first three webinars. Hormone disruption, that is what we were talking about, the disrupted patterns, throwing off your hormones, throwing off your hormone sensitivity, throwing off your insulin, your leptin, your cortisol, throwing off your hormones, that leads to poor sleep. Pull this back up. The poor sleep leads to more disrupted cycles. So you don't get a good night's sleep. So then what do most people do? You know, the next day they might, you know, go for a coffee. Um, and, and, you know, that's, that's, you know, fine in moderation. But here's what really happens is this vicious cycle that poor sleep leads to hormone disruption, leads to poor sleep, leads to hormone disruption, leads to more poor sleep. So that is the concern with these disrupted hormones from a, a poor diet, from lack of activity, lack of exercise, from too much stress, causes these imbalanced sleep cycles. The imbalanced sleep cycles cause more hormone disruption and eventually leads to bigger and bigger problems down the road. So one coffee turns to two coffees, turns to three coffees, turns to an afternoon coffee, turns to you know, a nighttime suppressant, taking you know, maybe first melatonin over, over the counter, uh, then it turns to to Ambien, then it turns to Xanax, and et cetera, et cetera. It is a vicious, vicious cycle. That's why the whole purpose of this webinar is to teach you some action steps that you can do, natural and healthy action steps to reset these cycles. So then, you know, the, the, the end result of all this, if you have poor sleep anywhere in there, the end result is low energy. So a couple of things that we're going to be talking about when it comes to breaking this cycle, the circadian rhythm. I would say, I don't think that I'm, that I'm you know, over-exaggerating here when I say that most people know what the circadian rhythm is. Uh, most people have heard that. If you ask them, what is the circadian rhythm, they'll say, well, it's the, the way that you fall asleep and you wake up. And I'd say that we've all experienced this, whether it's ourselves or it's our kids. If you get them on a schedule, if you get yourself on a schedule, you'll find that that schedule will just continue to repeat itself and repeat itself. Kids will wake up and go to sleep at about the same time every day and every night. And the same thing is true with you. Now, what happens is when those cycles get disrupted through the things that we've already mentioned, uh, through disrupted hormones, through you know maybe a long trip, maybe a, a, a bad break up a bad stressor, you know, something disrupts these cycles, well, they've got to get back on track. Now, what I want to mention before we move on to talk about the circadian rhythm is that this is a very basic steps that we're going to go over today. If you have a disorder, you have, let's say like a, a one like fibromyalgia, that we see great results with, you have disrupted hormones, you have disrupted blood sugar, your sleep might be poor. You have brain fog. You have some of these symptoms. You have a thyroid disease. You have a leaky gut. You have uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. These are, are real diagnosed conditions that you know might not be so simple as some of the action steps that we're going to talk about. So you might need real health coaching. You might need some additional assistance with this. But your circadian rhythm is what we're going to be talking about. Two hormones that we're going to be mentioning the most. Uh, you can see them right there. One is cortisol. 
That's your body's main stress hormone. If you've been following these webinars, you know about cortisol because we talked about it a lot in webinar number three, your body's main stress hormone. And like I said, it spikes in the morning and then it decreases throughout the day. That's a normal cycle. Uh, melatonin is the other one. And I would say that once again, I would say that most people have probably heard of melatonin. Um, it, and, and if nothing else, as an over-the-counter supplement that you can take to help aid sleep and we're going to talk about that in detail how to mine your melatonin in this webinar but melatonin is your body's darkness hormone so cortisol spikes early crashes throughout the day melatonin spikes at the end of the day and goes down throughout the night so you want to know how to control those two hormones the last webinar was large on how to control your cortisol response this webinar is completely 100% on how to control melatonin and cortisol cycles. Things you can do throughout the day to change cortisol and things you can do as night approaches to change melatonin. In webinar number seven, we're gonna go through how you can test these hormones. Okay, we're gonna look at some examples of 8 a.m., 12 p.m., 4 p.m., 8 p.m., readings, some different four times a day, six times a day readings of your adrenal stress profile, or what's called your HPA axis. That's your hypothalamus, your pituitary, and your adrenal glands. The axis, how that works together, how we can measure these cycles so we can see when somebody is really altered. But for many of us, today's webinar is going to give great action steps to regain control of your circadian rhythm and regain control, really, of your hormones. Now, I'll say at the point of the slides that this isn't going to be an immediate thing. Because of these cycles, because of these habits have to take place, you're, you're going to have to do it consistently, do it repeatedly, over and over again, as your body reestablishes these cycles. So it's not just a one-time thing. It's not a one-week thing. More like probably a month or, or a couple-week thing to really get your cycles back on track, especially if they're really altered or you know really backwards. Uh, so it's not going to be an overnight thing. So the circadian rhythm. Well, it's largely controlled through your eyes. So I want to talk about this you know picture here, and I don't expect anybody to be able to read this or anybody even really to understand it. But what this is illustrating is the connection between the light and your brain and your bloodstream. And I'm gonna break this, this picture down into really basic um, you know, science here. But your eyes obviously are what detects light. So when your eyes detect certain lights, and you can see on there, there's just kind of that color scale. Like if you can see that on the left is 400 nanometers, 500, 600, 700. So on the left are the more purples and blues, on the right are the more oranges and reds. Um, and that is kind of a, a important here, but your, your eyes are what detect light. That's why you know, when the sun is up, you're awake and your circadian rhythm is largely controlled through your eyes. There's now a new uh, pharmaceutical drug that there are commercials out for um, when you're blind. When you're blind, you have bad circadian rhythm because your eyes are what tell your body, hey, it's daytime. Hey, it's nighttime. So darkness and light are going to play a huge, huge role in everything that we're talking about today. So your eyes detect the light. Those are going to send signals into your brain. And what you need to know here isn't much, but the signals go into what's called the SCN, the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Then they go to the PVN. They go uh, to the superior cervical ganglia. Which, which are down in your neck, actually, why, why adjustments can help, you know, so many different things in your nervous system. They're actually very closely lining the vertebrae of your spine. But they go to the pineal gland. Okay, the pineal gland is the one that re releases melatonin. So that's what you need to know, basically, is that your eyes detect the light. They send a signal to your pineal gland. Your pineal gland is also known as your darkness gland, and melatonin is also known as your darkness hormone. When the darkness is detected, the pineal gland releases melatonin. That goes into your bloodstream, and it makes your body start to get tired. So pretty important stuff, but there's a lot of moving parts there. You need your eyes to be working. You need the connections to your brain to be working. You need your pineal gland to be working, and you need your melatonin pathways to be working there. But that is how, how that happens. Now, a couple things that we're going to talk about 
are the different colors of light and how different colors of light can disrupt this pathway. Like the first thing down here that you probably can't see, the circadian rhythm can be disrupted by exposure to purple and blue lights at night. So we're gonna talk about that or not receiving light in the morning. But so that's how this circadian rhythm happens your eyes detect what what time it is basically the light you know it's not your watch or your clock it's your eyes that detect that send a signal to the pineal gland releases melatonin into the bloodstream now how does your sleep cycle work so after your melatonin is released you start to get tired okay and so let's go through the sleep cycle you have five stages in your sleep cycle five stages stage one two, three, four, and then rapid eye movement, which is also stage five. And your body, what it's gonna do is it progresses through these sleep cycles, one, two, three, four, then rapid eye movement, then it comes back and goes through it. And as you go through the night, you spend different amount of times in each of these cycles, but it's really important that your body go through each of these you know, in, in the correct order. It's why sometimes, and we've all felt this, you can be woken at, you know, during a deep sleep cycle, and you're like, man, where am I? What's happening? Uh, you know, it takes a minute to just kind of get your bearings. You know, who who are you? Who am I talking to? What time is it? Have I been asleep for five days? Have I, have I been asleep for five minutes? You're just completely lost. But you're waking up in the wrong sleep cycle. What they found actually with their sleep is that it, it's not, now over time, it definitely is a matter of how much sleep you get per night. But what they found is that for your daily energy, what's more important is which sleep cycle you woke up in. So you slept two hours, but you woke up during a light sleep cycle, you're gonna feel better that day than if you slept 10 hours, but you woke up in a deep sleep cycle. And before I go on to this cycle, let me address something that's a really important question is how long should people sleep? I think that most people would say eight hours as their guess, and that is correct, but that is an average. That's not to say that everybody needs exactly eight hours. There are certain you know, high-level people. I think that Malcolm Gladwell uh, is one that's you know, New York Times best-selling author, you know, widely considered a genius. I think he's, he's noted for needing 10 hours of sleep a night. Some people need six, some people need seven, some people need nine. Everybody's going to be different. I would say that you know, on a ketogenic diet, you might need more. If you're doing hard exercise, you might need more rest and recovery. But you know, just while we're on the topic, uh, it doesn't matter how long you sleep, it matters more about your sleep cycles and going through those cycles in the right order. Um, but also each person's going, going to be different for their needs for their sleep. And once you have these rhythms set, you know, it's just like anything else. There is no right answer. Your body's going to tell you. These are natural things your body's going to tell you. Like, for example, let's go back to your diet. If somebody asks, you know, how often should I eat? Well, when you're hungry. Now, that's assuming that you're not metabolically broken, that your leptin isn't broken, that your ghrelin isn't bro broken. That's a hunger hormone. And it tell, those tell your body to stop eating. If those are broken, you just keep going, you overeat. So assuming that you're metabolically relatively healthy or you're starting to get this on track, you can eat until you're hungry. Same thing with sleep. You can sleep until you're rested. You can wake up when your body tells you to wake up. You can go to sleep when your body tells you to go to sleep. There are some ways that we can or that, that we can manipulate this to reset these cycles. But once you're on a good cycle, I think that's the, the best route is to do more of an innate way of living, uh, letting your body dictate how long you sleep for. So here's your stages, stage one and two. You, you first fall asleep, but you're not in a deep sleep yet. Your body spends the most time in stage two, actually. Stage one would be kind of a light sleep. Stage two, you're starting to get into a deep sleep. Stage three and four, these are your deep stage, deep sleep, restful sleep. This is when your body goes through the most regeneration and repair when your immune system kicks up, your breathing and your heart rate slow down. The only system in your body that actually speeds up during these stages is your nervous system. Uh, as your, your body is just going, I mean, there's a lot going on while you sleep. It's not like the whole factory is shut down, you know, quite the opposite. Your body is repairing, it's regenerating, 
it's rebuilding. That's why sleep is so important. And if you lose it, your body doesn't have the chance to go through that regeneration process. It's one of the amazing things about the body is that it's always repairing and regenerating, getting rid of old cells, getting new cells. You know, you get a new gut lining every four days, very rapid. You get a new skeletal system every 10 years. But those cells, each and every organ, every tissue, the cells are constantly healing and regenerating. So you need to be reaching those deep sleep cycles. Then stage five, also known as your REM stage, your rapid eye movement. So your eyes actually move back and forth very, very fast. And your brain gets more active. And that's when you get your dreams. So as you you know, move through these cycles. At the beginning of the night, you spend less time in stage five, you spend more time in stage two, and then in the, the restorative stage three and stage four. But as your body regenerates, as you go through the night, say you're getting into six, seven, eight hours of sleep, you start to spend more and more time in the lighter cycles and especially the rapid eye movement. That's why you have you know, a lot of dreams or kind of during the twilight hour of maybe it's about time to wake up and you wake up and you feel pretty refreshed. You're not groggy, but you think, man, I was just having an awesome dream. Uh, I'm going to try to go back to that dream. And it's, it's oftentimes impossible to uh, go back into that cycle. Whereas if you had a dream in the middle of the night and say you woke up and it's three in the morning, you think, man, I was I was having a good dream there. But, you know, later in the day or like 9 o'clock that morning, you think, man, I know I had a good dream last night, but you have a harder time remembering it because you're getting more deep sleep through the middle of the night, lighter sleep towards the beginning when you fall asleep, lighter sleep towards the stage 5 end uh, as you're getting closer to waking up. So stage 5, rapid eye movement. But you want to go through all five stages and then continue to go through them throughout the night, that is the sleep cycle. So what are three steps to reset your sleep cycle? And they're not really three steps, I would call them uh, maybe three three categories. They, they are steps, but within each step there are, are broader, uh, or, or I mean more narrow, there are three broad steps, there are more specific action steps within each one of these three broad categories. So these are three ways to reset your sleep we pull that back up here. Uh, number one is to set routines. Your body is a creature of habit. And when we talk about, you know, the importance of our rhythms, our rituals, when it comes to, you know, our hormones, our hormones changing, the hormones are, are in a routine. You know, at 5 a.m. every morning, at 6 a.m. every morning, you're going through certain hormonal routines, certain circadian rhythms. So you can manipulate those rhythms by setting certain routines in place, doing the same thing every day. We all probably know this, that, you know, when you wake up at 5.30 on the weekdays and you sleep until 9.30 on the weekends, it can really throw off your rhythms and throw off your cycles. So we're gonna give some good advice on how to set routines, not just nighttime routines, but routines throughout the entire day to help change these cycles, establish these patterns, and reset your sleep. So that's step number one. Step number two is to change your environment. Okay, so we are going to talk about some of the things that make an environment suitable for deep sleep. There are certain things you can do to change your environment. And a lot of that goes along with step number three. Step number three really encompasses everything. The routines, the environment, everything is really designed to mind your melatonin. How can you change your melatonin so that the production is the highest at night, it puts you to sleep, then you get a good, deep, restorative sleep through the night, you wake up feeling refreshed. Number three are some, some uh, advanced solutions on how to mind your melatonin. But step number one, to set routines. Setting routines throughout the day, so critically important to reset these rhythms. So getting right into it, well, what can you do in the morning? Well, you know, probably the biggest thing, the number one thing that I think that everybody can do to change their sleep is to wake up earlier. If you start waking up at four in the morning, like think about somebody that's just got a new job and they go from working, you know, at nine, nine to five to now they have to work at 5 a.m. 
Well, that's going to take some getting used to. But after a week or so, they're going to start getting used to it pretty rapidly. And your body can change pretty quickly with this. But I love this action step because so many people, they go to bed at night and they're, oh, I'm going to go to bed early. I'm going to go to bed at 8.30 tonight when they're used to going to bed at 10.30. But you just don't have that much control over that. You have a lot of control over what time you wake up through the use of an alarm clock. So if you're used to waking up at 8.30, now you're waking up at 4.30. Set your alarm clock there. After four or five days, your body's going to start getting used to it. It'll be rough at first, um, but you can you you have control over this. So changing the times that you wake up, the first thing that I would recommend doing. If you have poor sleep cycles, and let's say you wake up every day at eight o'clock and you just feel groggy, you're the wired and tired. You're tired in the morning. You're wired at night. Well, you're already groggy in the morning. So start waking up at six just to change your rhythms and routines. Now, are you gonna be groggy-er? Yeah, probably. You're probably not gonna feel that great. If you already feel bad at eight, you feel not rested, the solution isn't to sleep until nine. The solution is to reset your hormone cycles. So start waking up at six, do that for a couple weeks straight, and your body will reset. Now, even on the weekends, that's really, really tough. And this is something that I struggle with because if you know our, our schedule in our clinic, we are open at 7.30 in the morning, three days a week. We don't open until 3 p.m. two other days of the week. So I have the option of sleeping in two days a week. For most of us, it's the weekend that causes a problem. What I would suggest is you're taking the action step into place. Wake up at the same time all seven days of the week. Saturday, Sunday, wake up at the same time. Or in the, in the worst case, don't go too far off. If you're up 5 a.m. You know, on the weekdays during your work week, don't be a 9, 10, you know, sleep in as long as you can type of person on the weekends. It's going to, going to disrupt these cycles. So waking up earlier, first step in the morning, to actually reset your, your routines and hormone routines to help you at night. So wake up earlier. Another one is exercise early. Now, this doesn't have to be your full exercise routine. Let's say you got to get to work really early. Uh, you don't have to go to the gym. You don't have to do your full routine. But what they found is that exercising early in the morning actually resets your melatonin cycles and boosts melatonin earlier in the evening. What you want is with that early morning cortisol spike, you want to boost that cortisol spike so you can exercise early in the morning. Now, let's say you get off at 4.30 in the afternoon, and every day you go to the gym at 4.30 in the afternoon, you have a great habit there. I'm not suggesting that you disrupt that habit, but what I am suggesting is that for five minutes in the morning, you give your body a good jolt, a good workout. You do air squats, you do push-ups, you do jumping jacks, but you give a quick couple minute hard workout to just get a little additional cortisol spike in the morning, and then that will begin to dip. Doesn't have to be a full blown workout, but getting a workout in the morning will help set some routines and help start to change these hormone cycles. The third one is really, really important. It's be exposed to natural light early. If we go back to the uh, circadian rhythm here, one of the things that says the circadian rhythm can be disrupted by not receiving light in the morning. So you want to let your body know that it is morning. A great thing is to watch the sunrise. You know, I watched the sunrise in the mountains yesterday while skiing. It's great. Not only do I wake up at 4.15, that, which makes you really tired by the end of the day, but watching the sunrise, watching that natural light early in the morning. Now, that's not an option for everybody to just, you know, sit and sun gaze when the sun comes up. Or let's say you wake up at 8 a.m. and the sun's already up. Well, what I'm suggesting is that as early as you can, you get exposed to natural sunlight. Right now, it's winter. Uh, you, you know, it's not the best option to go outside. The best thing is to get your eyes and your skin exposed to sunlight. Really, really good for a number of reasons. But early in the morning, let's say as you're getting ready, Pull the blinds up. Let the sun come in. You want to be exposed to natural sunlight, blue light, sunrise being the best. But even you know that 8 a.m., that 9 a.m., that 10 a.m. sunlight, you want to be as exposed to that as you possibly can. So even throughout the day, going to look out the window 
you know, if you're under fluorescent lights, you're in an artificially lit environment, you stare at a computer screen all day, you're getting all these light inputs, but they're all artificial. When you think about this, this is, I, I think this is just fascinating and amazing. Your body is so smart, blue light makes it awake, which you know, makes sense because what color is the sky during the day? It's blue, we wanna be awake during that time. And orange light, red light, the light that we see as the sun begins to dip below the horizon, makes your body start to get tired. And then darkness makes your body truly get tired. So you think about the way that we were designed to live and how it's smart and how you know, just immaculate our bodies have been designed. It, it makes perfect sense. But most people today, they're under artificial lights, they're staring at screens, they're staring at their phones and their devices, and they're getting this artificial input to their hormone cycles. They're getting disrupted over time, and it's causing all these problems. So get exposed to the light early, watch the sunrise, or you know, just make a point where, you know, say you enjoy a morning coffee, which is you know, another thing that if you want to fix your sleep cycles, cut out the stimulants, cut out the depressants, cut out either one of those if you're taking them at all. You know, no coffee in the morning, no wine at night. Cut those out and let your body reset its cycles. But let's say you're, you're enjoying you know, a glass of water in the morning. Well, pull your blinds up, stare out the window deliberately to get exposure to light early. Now, those are morning routine, daytime routines, really, really important. How about your evening routine? Well, block the blue light after sunset. So after the sun is set, the body is not designed to be exposed to any blue light. So there's blue light coming from your TV. There's blue light coming from your phone or your iPad. There's blue light coming from all sorts of sources, artificial light, like I was just mentioning. And you can block those rays out. So I'm going to show you in a second some things you can do to block those rays out. Another one is turn off your screens. That's a way to block those rays out, is just turn off your screen. So in the evening, creating a calming routine might include things like we turn our screens off at 8.30 when we're gonna go to bed at 9.30. You create a routine turning your screens off you know, at least an hour before bedtime, allowing that melatonin production to boost. Turn off your phone, turn off your computer, turn off your TV, um, or block the blue rays. Even if you're blocking the blue rays, uh, then I would still turn these off because they're stimulatory. All of our electronic devices are stimulatory. Even reading a book, you know, on your Kindle or on your iPad, uh, you can block the blue rays. Reading by itself is, isn't necessarily uh, stimulatory, I think, it, I think it probably is in the central nervous system, but it can calm your body. You might say, well, I look at my screen and it makes my eyes really tired. It makes my eyes get really heavy. Yeah, your eyes do get heavy and, and tired from staring at a light long enough, but your brain doesn't. Your brain gets stimulated, so create a night routine. Some other things you can do or go back to webinar number three and combine some of the action steps that we talked about to turn on your parasympathetic nervous system, which turns off your sympathetic, turn on your rest and digest nervous system, and turn off your fight or flight. So maybe you do a meditation, maybe you do some deep diaphragmatic breathing. I had a patient in who was telling me about doing some deep diaphragmatic breathing before he goes to sleep and how in three nights, how it's been amazing to go through that and actually feel the changes that he's experiencing. Or maybe it wasn't three nights, maybe he said at most he goes through three rounds of it, and by the third round at the most, he notices that he's ready for bed. And just a big change. So use some of those action steps that we talked about in the last webinar to create a calming routine. Maybe you dim the lights at a certain time. Maybe you take a, 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 you know, a warm bath. Uh, in Epsom salts, which is high in magnesium. Magnesium supports a calming effect and supports melatonin production, supports sleep. Uh, maybe you, gosh, um, yeah, I wouldn't say exercise, I wouldn't say eat, but creating a calming routine that you do daily. Your body's gonna start associating those things. When the lights go down, your body thinks, oh, it's time to start winding down. The iPad is put away. It's time to start winding down. 
There's a lot of different things you can do to create an evening routine. But setting these simple routines on a daily basis, doing them regularly, resets these hormone cycles and your circadian rhythm. So that is step number one, set new routines. Step number two is change your environment. So, you know, it's very possible that you're not sleeping in a sleep-friendly environment. Um, and, and so that could be things like your pillow, your mattress. That could be things like the temperature that you're keeping your room at. That could be things like even, you know, some kind of night light, which, you know, some people might want or need for security reasons or you've gotten used to it. But what they've shown is that flipping on a lamp in the middle of the night, just flipping on a lamp for a second, shuts down melatonin production immediately. So you want cave-like darkness, a cold temperature is really, really good, a good mattress, really, really good thing to change your environment. So let's talk about a couple of those things. The first one, I'd say get a new mattress. You know, if you're, that, and I, one thing that I wanna just point out is do I think that many people could use a new mattress? Absolutely. But so many people come in and they say, oh, I'm waking up with neck pain, I'm not sleeping very well, I think it's my mattress. Well, I don't know why everybody always wants to jump to the several thousand dollar solution when there's a ton of other things, you know, in between, you know, that being the most conservative approach. Try all these other things first. But yeah, you probably do need a, a new mattress uh, if you think that that's a problem. You're waking up with pain, you're waking up with, you know, you're just not getting a, a deep night's sleep. So the mattress that I love is called Intellimet. And I'm very open to say that I don't use an IntelliBet because I, I have a posturepedic, I have a, a good mattress that I enjoy. But when it's time to switch, there's absolutely no mattress that I would ever buy again other than an IntelliBet. And there are three reasons why I really like that bed. One is for spinal support. You know, so a, a hugely important thing to me is having good support of your spine. <coughs> Excuse me. Good postural support and IntelliBeds provide amazing postural support. Number two is that they're non-toxic. They're very well known for being non-toxic. They're very particular about being non-toxic. You might think, well, how can a mattress be toxic? Well, a lot of the foams, a lot of the things that they use in our mattresses do what's called off-gassing. And so you're spending eight hours a night with your face buried in this foam and there are different chemicals, there are different flame retardants, there are different things in these foams that are actually severely, severely toxic that you're breathing in. Intellibed does not have that. And number three, they have an amazing warranty. So their quality is really great. They have an amazing warranty. I think most mattresses have a sag warranty that if it sags an inch and a half, um, then they're going to warranty that mattress. Uh, Intellibeds is half of that. If it sags 0.75, three quarters of an inch, they will warranty that bed. So they're very, very long lasting. So that's a good solution, you know, for some people. Get a new mattress, you know, if you're having a hard time sleeping. It's, it's really, really important. You spend a third of your life in bed and on your mattress. So if it's a problem, fix it. Change your environment with your mattress, with your pillow. The other thing is black out your room. So when we talk about melatonin, you want to be living in what's called cave-like darkness, okay? Cave-like darkness, and you want your room to be cold as well. But blacked out is going to stimulate that melatonin production, or, or more importantly, not shut it off. Your body is naturally producing it because it's nighttime. What you don't want to do is you don't want to shut that production off. So no lamps, no night lights, uh, no source of light. When you go into your room, no TV in your room, absolutely not. When you go into your room, you want it to be cave-like darkness, and you want to keep it that way throughout the rest of the night. And the last one, change your temperature. So along with that cave-like uh, cave -like darkness, keep your temperature low. Your body sleeps better in a low temperature. Now, one thing that you can do, like I said, take a warm bath. A sudden a change in temperature will actually help your body go to sleep. So taking a warm bath and then moving into a cold room can actually help stimulate your body to sleep. But change your environment. Make sure that you are living in an environment that is suitable for good sleep. No lights, cold temperature, comfortable mattress, 
uh, and, and comfort, you know, is one thing. But, you know, a mattress that you can sleep on, a mattress that you get a good deep sleep on, a pillow that you enjoy. It, you know, sometimes people ask me, what's the best mattress? And, I, and instead of saying Intel, but I'll say the one that you can sleep on. Or they'll say, what's better, a hard or soft mattress? I'll say the one that you can sleep on. You know, the answer is firm, the firmer, the better. But not all of us can sleep on, on you know, a flat floor or something. Um, we all have different comfort levels. So the one that you sleep on is the one that I like the best for you. So change your environment. Then number three, mind your melatonin. And the first thing I put up here as a reminder is, you know, look at the last three webinars because everything ties together. If you're eating a processed food diet, you, you're hurting your melatonin. You're hurting your hormone sensitivity. If you follow the webinars, we talk about hormone sensitivity and we talk about inflammation. We say that hormones are keys and each key fits the lock. And the key fit in the lock unlocks different metabolic processes like fat burning, like energy production, like sleep stimulating. So when your keys fit in your lock smoothly, they can unlock these processes. But when you're eating a poor diet, it's, it creates inflammation. And inflammation affects the way that your key and your lock fit together. It's like putting super glue in your lock. It blocks it. So real food diet, exercising regularly, decreasing your stress hormones. The first three webinars, step one, step two, step three, are really, really important for minding your melatonin. They actually do have a big effect on your melatonin and on these cycles. But after you're taking those action steps, assuming that you've watched webinar one, you've watched webinar two, you've watched webinar three, and you're, you're putting those action steps into your life, Assuming you're doing those, then you have to change your light exposure. So, you know, if we went back to that slide that shows, you know, I don't think we need to, but, you know, your eyes detect the light. They send signals to your brain, to your pineal gland, and that produces melatonin. So it is all about your light exposure. So how can you change your light exposure? Well, in the morning, we already talked about through your routines, you can exercise. Spike your cortisol in the morning, reset your melatonin cycles. That's been shown through, you know, measuring these hormones through labs, that exercising in the morning, even a short burst of exercise, changes your melatonin at night. But get that light exposure early in the day to natural daylight. In the evening, we already talked about this with our routines as well. Turn off your screens, black out your room, turn down your temperature that actually helps stimulate melatonin but one of the biggest methods uh, easiest methods in today's society is to wear blue blocker glasses because so many people you know it's just a habit to come home to watch tv to do something on the computer you know we live in a device driven world today so i'm not saying that you need to get rid of all this stuff uh, but get yourself something like what i'm wearing right here these are blue blocker glasses they're eight or nine bucks on amazon you can type it in they make some that are a little more hip they're not all like you know this wraparound style this is not not the the hippest thing um but you know who are you gonna see when you're sitting at home you know i sit with my wife and, and i ordered two pairs of these so i got the cheapest ones but they're very very effective and the first night that my wife and i got these we we're wearing them while we we're watching tv and you can feel a difference. It's kind of like when you start doing deep breathing or diaphragmatic breathing. I said immediately, you can feel a difference. And you keep these on at night, you can feel a difference. So if you're going to sit and watch TV. Now, I still encourage you to turn off all the devices an hour before bedtime. But let's say you're going to sit and you're going to watch you know, a, a basketball game. Uh, like last night, I was watching a basketball game with my blue blockers on. Last night, I also FaceTimed some people. And they said, what are you wearing? And I had to explain to them the blue blockers. Um, and people are always intrigued. Like, why are you wearing those around? But these orange lenses block the blue light from getting to your eyes. So you can continue watching. There are blue blocker uh, screens that you put over your phone. They're a blue blocker, you know, they make all the different iPad sizes. There are all kinds of things to block your blue rays, block those blue rays from getting to your eyes so that your body can continue to produce 
melatonin. There are also, we have some orange uh, light bulbs, you know, so you replace your fluorescent light bulbs, you replace your, your just iridescent, you know, your, your, your uh, just normal light bulb with an orange light, an orange tinted light. Once again, it helps to stimulate melatonin production. So we put orange lights like in our girls' nursery. We can't get them to wear blue blockers. We've stopped giving them any screen time after sunset. Um, and we're taking some of these steps to, for our kids even to make sure that their cycles are right. But blue blocker glasses, a uh, really, really easy, really cheap thing that anybody can do, eight or nine bucks on Amazon. Um, check those out, make sure you get some blue blockers. But these are some simple action steps. I mean, none of these action steps are, are that hard. I'm not telling you to go take your TV out and you know, throw it out into the dumpster. I'm telling you to get on Amazon and get some blue blocker glasses. I'm not telling you that you need to, you know, move to a different, you know, latitude and, and get different, you know, exposure to light. I'm telling you that you need to change your environment, change the temperature, some things that you can control. Uh, do you know, we've already talked about your diet, your exercise, your stress hormones, but these are really, really simple action steps. And when you start to put these action steps into place, you start to notice these changes. But like I said, because these are cycles, it's not something that you're necessarily going to notice on day number one, but you continue doing these things. You do it for a day, you do it for a week, you do it for a month. You combine some of these simple action steps with some of the action steps we've gone over in the past podcast, or webinars rather, and some of the action steps that we're gonna go over in the future webinars, steps five through 10, you start adding in these things and you start to notice a dramatic change. We tell our patients all the time, as long as you continue to take baby steps in the right direction, when you turn back and you look at how far you've come, you're amazed at how far you've moved in the right direction. You just gotta keep headed that way. We don't expect leaps and bounds, it's the baby steps. And when it comes to your hormone cycles, the most important thing is doing these things, small action steps, couple minutes a day, but doing them with rhythm and regularity so that your body can uh, get accustomed to these new patterns. Now, as always, we wanna close this webinar by saying, you know, 90% of people, 100% of people can, can glean something from this webinar. Everybody could be helped by putting some of these action steps into place. But for some people that are out there that, you know, just have horrible sleep patterns that have taken, you know, Ambien for 10 years or, or Xanax or, you know, rely on a pot of coffee every morning or know they have adrenal fatigue or adrenal burnout or have chronic fatigue or fibromyalgia or thyroid disease. And, you know, that's not very rare these days. The things that I've just listed, you know, the majority of people, poor blood sugar control, diabetes, early signs of heart disease, you know, we're getting into the majority of our population. If that is you, these action steps will help you, but it's not about, you know, how can we manage these diseases? It's how can we reverse them? How can we get rid of them? And that's the time when you, you need a coach. You need somebody to help you. There are a lot of pieces to the puzzle. And sometimes when you're looking at your own puzzle, it's hard to see it from an outsider's perspective, from a 30,000 you know, feet above sea level view where you're looking down on your own life. And that's exactly what we do at our practice. You know, through helping patients put the pieces of their puzzle together, you know, we've seen such incredible results. We've seen people get off of 15, 17, 14 syrup, medications, over a dozen medications on a day basis. Seen people cut that down to zero, studying any. And that didn't happen overnight. It was putting the pieces of the puzzle together. We've seen people lose over 100 pounds. We've seen people reverse chronic diseases like heart disease, like diabetes, like fibromyalgia, like thyroid disease, like irritable bowel syndrome, like you know, testosterone hormone imbalances, all kinds of, of reversals and healing of chronic disease. And that honestly has nothing to do with us or with me. It's honoring your body's innate, God-given ability to heal itself. And so when we help you look at that, we help you look at that through a different lens, we help you put the pieces of the puzzle together, your body can do amazing, amazing 
things when you treat it the way that it was designed. So that's what real health coaching is, helping you put the pieces of the puzzle together. So if that's something that you're interested in, go to www.realhealthresource.com and you can look at more information on real health coaching, an affordable health coaching program where, where we help you put the pieces of the puzzle together. You get you know a couple Skype calls, a couple uh, video chats like this per month. You get unlimited email access. You get 10% off any supplements. You get 10% off any lab testing that needs to be done. And you really get the opportunity to put your life back together by putting the pieces of the puzzle in the right place place so check that out if you're interested otherwise if you haven't already make sure that you watch the other webinars that we have available not just as part of the uh you know 10 steps to renew your energy but the other ones that are out there are like autoimmune disease like uh, blood sugar controlling your blood sugar like healing a leaky gut and then we also have you know 40 plus podcast episodes so all these resources that are available at the real health resource continue learning continue growing continue diving into this stuff and we know that you can achieve real health so as always i'm your host dr taylor crick and we will see you next time for step number five detoxify your body and your life looking forward to it